Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, a man in critical condition after he was shot five times over his bike. Well, you know about the events leading up to that shooting. You know, San Antonio is becoming, uh, is no longer a best kept secret and people are investing their time, their talent, their energy and their money and, and resources into San Antonio to create a better situation for all of us. Mayor Ron Nuremberg talks about the city of San Antonio, where we are right now and where are we going. It is the first installment of our new series, Leading SA. And taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful shot there. The sun is out, but it's cold. 37 degrees. If you have to be outside, of course, bundle up. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Cerna. Thanks for joining us. It is Sunday, January 12th and very cold outside. Yes. Very cold outside, but the sun is shining. Yes. And if it's anything like yesterday, it is going to be another beauty out there. Did you make it outside yesterday? Yes, it was awesome. What'd you do? Beautiful day. Family fun? But, well, in and out of the house, but yes. Yeah, yeah. running errands. <laughs> so, Mike, do people have to run errands today? It's a good day? Perfect. Yeah. It's cold this morning, uh, but we've got a great sunrise on tap right now. Temperature is now up to, well, it was still at 37 degrees as of right now. We stayed steady for about the past um, couple of hours and starting to warm up in portions of the hill country. Wind is very light out of the uh, west and northwest at about three miles per hour, so not much of a wind chill to deal with this morning. And there are a couple of clouds out there. Temperatures around the area right now. As you can see, we do have some freezing readings still in parts of the hill country, but it won't be long before uh, once that sun gets up a little bit higher before things really start to warm up. It's still freezing Balverde comfort and then throughout the rest of today we are going to make it up to the mid 60s. Couple of extra clouds kind of hanging around here. Things are definitely going to be changing overnight. The humidity is going to come back into the picture and we'll have some morning fog, maybe a little bit of drizzle around here and then there's a small chance for a shower tomorrow. Really wouldn't worry about it that much, but just a mention of it and 68 degrees Then the rest of the week. It's going to be even milder. A couple of showers here and there. Not any big deal, unfortunately, as far as rain is concerned. Another front's going to be moving through late in the week. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thanks, Mike. Top stories we're following this morning. A man shot five times after another man tried stealing his bike. Now, the shooting happened just before 11 last night on North Braza Street and Kaufman Court on the city's west side. Now, according to police, the victim was riding his bike when he was stopped by the suspect who was demanding that bike. The victim refused, and that's when the man shot him five times. Now, the man was taken into custody and is facing at least a charge of aggravated assault. Victim was taken to the hospital and right now is in critical condition. And the critically low blood shortage in South Texas continues. South Texans, though, they have made 2,062 donations since an appeal began Tuesday for more donations. And representatives with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center say they are still only one major traffic accident away from depleting their blood supply. Sarah Costa live at the Donor Pavilion with how the community can help out today. Good morning, and like you said earlier, Max, they, they have had 2,062 donations since that appeal was made on Tuesday. As of yesterday, they are still 100 donations short um, as for their goal. Their goal is 2,162 to make sure that no major surgeries are having to be canceled if there was an accident, God forbid, and South Texas not having enough blood, and that is why their centers are open today more of their centers or all of their centers. I'm here with Mary Ulick with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And, you know, why did it come to this critical low level? How did we get here? Well, two things really. Coming off the holidays when there are fewer blood drives scheduled and more people are busy and can't come in to donate, our supplies were low. We've also had a series of trauma accidents in San Antonio, trauma cases that our hospitals have had to respond to. One case, a single patient used more than 200 units of blood. It's close to half of our collections on a daily basis. So low supply coming off the holidays combined with fewer blood drives and fewer donors is a recipe for disaster for our blood supply. So you guys really just need as many donations and many donors to come out today. I know usually only three donation centers are open, but all of them are open today and they opened as early as 7.30 this morning. That's right. We have seven donor rooms, five in San Antonio, one in New Braunfels, one in Victoria. They are all open today. We're hoping that donors come out. 
Uh, they can see the schedules, and if they want, schedule an appointment at southtexasblood.org. And they can also find out about mobile drives. Uh, we really need support for our mobile drives in January, too, hosted by local corporations and organizations. We hope people sign up and come out and, and support their community and patients in our hospitals. Well, thank you so much, Mary. We already see two people, or maybe three people are already out here donating early this morning. So if you're going to be out and about, especially the Donor Pavilion, it's right off Highway 10, or I-10, just come on by. Even if you can't schedule an appointment, if you're, they also take walk-ins as well. Live from the Donor Pavilion for South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. And we have a new series here at KSET called Leading SA, where we sit down with some of our elected officials and the leaders of the Alamo City. And so to kick off the series, I sat down with Mayor Ron Nuremberg. We talked about a lot. Our conversation ranging from the possibility of some high-tech public transit to crime rates and the vision of the future of the Alamo City. Well, first of all, San Antonio is not the next Austin. San Antonio is the next San Antonio. We are growing in a unique way, and we're protecting our culture, our heritage, and we are a unique city into the world, and we will maintain that. That's a focus of ours. San Antonio is growing at a rapid pace. The estimates show we could add another 1 million people by the year 2040. So one of the mayor's top priorities, make sure that our public transportation system is prepared. And so the work that we're doing right now is to uh, basically bring that uh, connection Connect SA plan to the public and to the council and to the commissioner's court to get approval and ultimately uh, put the funding for that system on the ballot in November. The 2020 ballot will be a big decision for the people of San Antonio. The vote could decide whether the city's one eighth cent sales tax could go help fund the future of public transit. There's a lot of activity and a lot of transportation happening and a lot of congestion. We're trying to link up with a mass transit system in the city of San Antonio. So the ART, Advanced Rapid Transit, is a a uh, system of transit, transportation that would allow us to bring high density mass transit to San Antonio in a cost effective, fundable manner. Another one of the mayor's top priorities for 2020 is the census and making sure we are all counted and our voices are heard because it has huge implications. For everything that we do from a public standpoint, you and me riding on our streets or going to our schools depends on making sure that, that relative to the other cities around the country, we know how many people are in San Antonio. We had a lot of viewer questions submitted as well. A popular topic revolved around homelessness, how to address the problem going forward and avoid issues that we see in Austin. Austin has dealt with its homelessness issues in much different ways and we have the benefit of having an extraordinary um, community of services and organizations that are contributing to that effort. Another topic viewers wanted to ask about was crime rates and gang violence. We've been working in partnership with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, with the state of Texas DPS and other entities including uh, in intelligence agencies to share information and to ensure that we're getting a grip on gang activity. It's called the Tan Texas Anti-Gangs Initiative. We are on pace for rapid growth. There are big plans for education and for more businesses here in the Alamo City. Can we compete with Austin in the future with tech giants? Uh, we're getting there. Austin, believe it or not, we have more college students than Austin does here in San Antonio. The question is where will they be after they graduate? And so we're starting to see a lot, a lot of growth within our young tech community and the tech jobs that are available. All in all, whether it's schools, jobs, crime rates, or the local economy, there's a sense of optimism in San Antonio, now and going forward. Ultimately, that's what the test will be, is to ensure that our city continues to move on the right track, that we're continuing to be a place where people can find their career, that they can feel safe, that they have an enjoyable experience, and they're able to raise a family. Now, this is just a fraction of the large range of topics the mayor and I discussed. We dove into growing our city, keeping the culture alive, expansion of UTSA, education, local businesses, protecting green spaces, so much more. And you can watch it on our KSAT streaming app and KSAT.com right now. You're going to be able to watch the entire interview, including links to topics that many that the mayor touched on. I like that. One of the focus, of course, transportation. You know, mm -hmm. the mayor had talked about people sitting in gridlock. Now... He says, if, you, if you're feeling it now, can you imagine? 
with another million people right, or so. Right, if, if something's not done. We had VIA on SA Live the other day because they were talking about their plan for the future, and they it's a 10-year plan, and they've got some different things like dedicated uh, lanes for not necessarily buses, maybe a mm -hmm. different type of vehicle. Uh, it's They call it the smart man's light rail, which mm -hmm. would, would help out with that. And so they're already trying to do different things. But, you know, the, the million more people in 20 years, and during that, they had uh, brought up the fact that next year, we may jump into number six place in the country as far as the largest cities. Wow. We're at seven right now and may continue to move up from there, so. I don't yeah. feel like we're, well, no, you know, we're very spread feel, out. Yeah, it's, well, it's, we are. It's very spread out, and what's unusual then, outside the metropolitan area, there's nothing out there, you know, unlike, so right. once you get past the surrounding counties, gotcha. there's nothing out there. But. It is important to mention, though, that this is only the first segment in the series leading SA. We talked to Manny Pelias last week, and then this Tuesday, we're sitting down with Anna Sandoval, District 7. So if you guys have any questions, viewers, oh, yeah. send them in. Send them in, ksat.com. We have a, uh, a section where you can submit your questions. When I sit down with her Tuesday morning, we will ask them. Neat series. Yeah, very cool. You can check it out on OTT as well. Absolutely. 810, 37 degrees out. And a huge upset that Max liked. <laughs> yeah, in the NFL playoff picture, the number one team going down. So could the Texans and Titans see each other for a third time this season? in the AFC Championship. Full preview with Max, just ahead. That was Derrick Henry, <laughs> barreling his way to 195 <laughs> rushing yards. Also threw a touchdown, we have highlights. And if you're gonna be on the roads today, you might wanna check your GPS before you leave. Lots of road closures happening in and around the city. We'll tell you all about them next. And taking a look outside with live cam, looks pretty to me, but looks chilly, right? 37 degrees, Mike? Yep, That's correct. Cold. Yeah, yep. it's cold. Get a jacket. Definitely for right now. We're going to check in with Mike after the break to see what we can expect for the rest of the week. Good morning and welcome back. 8.15 this Sunday morning. And if you're going to be out and about today, listen up. CPS Energy crews are out there working in three different locations today. So expect major road closures. That's right. Warsbach Parkway, Lock Hill Selma has been closed since 7 this morning and will remain closed until about 3 in the afternoon. So CPS Energy reminding drivers of the move over slow down law. It requires drivers to move over or slow down for first responders, tech stop vehicles, tow trucks, utility workers, and trash collectors stopped on the side of the road with emergency lights activated. So for a full list of all those road closures happening today and when they're expected to reopen, you can go to our website at kset.com. And so far today, 37 degrees, yes, but it looks like a great day to be out and about, getting those errands done. Yep. Get everything finished. Yep. Yeah, uh, we've got, um, uh, what I was going to say, more clouds today than what we've had the past uh, couple of days. And we're still going to gain about 30 degrees. It's still going to be a fantastic day. I mean, just awesome. comparing it to yesterday, it won't be as perfect looking, but it's still going to be really nice. Well, yesterday really, was really nice. cream of the crop. Yeah, yeah, we had those very, I mean, just set the bar intensely high. blue skies. We've got a couple of clouds out there. I love this picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. With regular deer season coming to an end, nice. activity is still high. The buck still had the does covered. That's so cool. That's Laredo? That's a great, yeah, that's a great. That's that's a beautiful shot. Thank you the uh, Connect picture. Speaking of beautiful day, wow. Now, there's those high clouds that are hanging around here. Obviously, it's not blocking out the sunshine. We've got plenty of it out there right now. And we haven't started to warm yet. Temperatures are still, that was our uh, low this morning, officially 37 degrees. Freezing Balverde, uh, Bernie up toward the hill country, Rio Medina, Tarpley, and still freezing in Pleasanton. And got some very dry air out there, of course. And it was the dry air, the clear skies, the light wind, the loud temperatures to really drop down. Then we had the moisture come on in here. This was the air that we had yesterday, this dark shade right here, and that's the bone dry air upstairs. So now we've got that milky shade, those high wispy clouds out there. It's still a fantastic looking day. And this computer model has some of these clouds hanging around here throughout the day and then really starting to cloud up overnight. We're going to have the humidity come back on in here. That's going to give us some fog, maybe some mist and drizzle in the morning. And a couple of showers are possible throughout the day. Computer models have one or two of them sort of scattered about, even going into tomorrow night and then Tuesday pretty much the same thing except it will get progressively warmer as we go on in through the rest of the week. Here's what it looks like as far as the wind flow. It really starts to pick up out of the southeast. Now the humidity will begin to increase later on today. It's not like it's going to wreck the day at all. So it's going to be great to be outside. But then that humidity really pumps on in here overnight. And so that's why we do see 
the mist and fog and drizzle and whatever and very, very mild low temperatures because you can't drop down below what the uh, dew point temperatures are. So therefore, we are going to be staying for low temperatures basically in the low to mid 60s throughout most of the rest of the week. So there's those few clouds that are showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now. We still don't have any big storm systems moving on in here. Most everything is staying well up there to the north of us. There may be another front trying to move through by hmm, Friday into Saturday. It's not going to be one of those really clears us all now, but it will get temperatures back down to normal readings after we have a very, very mild week. 57 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. A lot of those high clouds out there today and then a high temperature. We make it up to 65, so a little bit above normal. Good looking day, a lot of high clouds, still fantastic, partly cloudy skies. And then tomorrow we start off with some fog in the morning, 48 degrees, cool. It's going to be that sort of damp chill tomorrow morning. So that'll kind of sneak down the back of your neck a little bit. And temperatures continue to get milder, mid and upper 70s, middle of the week. A couple of showers are possible. This is not going to be a big rain event. Uh, you summed it up quite well, kind of nuisance, little showers here and there, gotcha. mist and fog tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, and then another uh, decent front moves through here by Saturday. Hmm. But as far as the middle of the week, our utility bills, not too bad, kind of mild. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking nice. at. <laughs> exactly. Not going to be running a heater. Maybe. We talk about this all the time. Steph, just the sense of optimism on GMSA mm -hmm. on the weekends. I continue with that. She's always. Well, it's true. Oh, yeah. We'll save money Smile for a few days. Ear. The glass Love is not it. half full. The glass is just overflowing right. with Stephanie. So. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Thanks. Time now, 819, 37 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, it's award season, and the Academy Awards are revealing nominations this week, how you can stream the nominations. And the presumptive MVP and the number one team in the NFL, out of the playoffs. The Ravens dethroned by an unlikely foe. The recap coming up right after the break. There's King Henry right there. Wow. Pro Football Coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. It is a good day for playoff football, so let's get started. The Houston Texans meeting the Chiefs in Kansas City today, and it will feature two of the league's best young quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson and, of course, Patrick Mahomes. Shout out Texas Tech. Both of them coming out of the 2017 NFL Draft. Both have had some miraculous moments this season. The game is set for this afternoon. Very exciting and also fun fact snowed yesterday in Kansas City, but today it should be clear skies. Great game for some good quarterbacking. All right, next up, also talking about divisional round today, Seattle Seahawks and Green Bay Packers. A game is set to start at about 540 this evening. The king of the AFC is down and out. Lamar Jackson, the presumptive MVP, and the number one ranked Ravens losing last night at the hands of Derrick Henry, King Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and the Titans defense. On paper, Lamar Jackson played a top tier game Kept his MVP numbers alive. He finished the game with 365 yards passing and 143 yards running. What you're looking at right now is King Henry running down the field. So if you watched last night, it was all Derrick Henry. A few great tosses from Texas A&M alum Ryan Tannehill and the phenomenal Titans defense. Whew. Derrick Henry barreling his way to 195 yards on the ground. He even threw a touchdown pass. So the Titans, the Tennessee Titans, 9-7 and seven, regular season record. They are going to the AFC Championship for the first time since 2002. The question that should be answered by the end of the day, who will they play in that AFC Championship game, the Texans or the Chiefs? All right, and it is a culmination of blood, sweat, and in so many teams' cases, tears. The College Football Championship set for tomorrow evening, and it is all Tigers, the Clemson Tigers and the LSU Tigers. The game set for Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans kickoff, 7 o'clock. And time to talk Spurs. Next game is tonight, taking on the Toronto Raptors. And it is in Toronto. Tip-off set for 5 o'clock. Also important to mention, the Raptors no longer have... <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. He is a member of the Clippers. Yeah. But if we do remember back to that Kawhi trade, mm -hmm. DeMar DeRozan, a big part of that Toronto Raptors team... Right. He has been playing out of his mind the last 10 games. Hopefully that translates to a win tonight. That's right. Coming off that bad loss to the Grizzlies. So if the playoffs start today, the Spurs would be on the outside looking in to the Grizzlies in the 8th seed. Yes, so DeRosa needs to bring it again tonight. Mm -hmm. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 825, 37 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, calling all rock and roll fans. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will be announcing its 2020 inductees. Find out a few that made the list. And a whirlwind 
in the week of politics. Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi promising to send those articles of impeachment to the Senate. The latest on the impeachment showdown, that's next. And let's take a look at birthdays today. First up, we have Ezra, two years old. Aww. Happy birthday, Ezra. Happy birthday. And a happy birthday to McKaylin. Beautiful pick, 10 years old. Enjoy your day. Kaylin turning 10 today. Now keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. And remember to include a name and an age. And Aww. not a birthday, but a very <laughs> special shout out to our own Sarah Spivey. Sarah, today is her wedding day and we want to wish her the best. Congratulations, Sarah. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday. And thank you for being here on this very cold morning, 37 degrees. Hopefully a lot of you are still covered up. Covered up. A nice warm blanket. Bundled up. 37 yes. now, but it looks like it could be a perfect day for a Sunday fun day, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be just fantastic. By the way, the uh, latest uh, mold count or pollen count just came out. Didn't have time to update the graphic, but mold is on the light side and mountain cedar is on the heavy side, but it came down at uh, 2,460. I'm going to get that graphic made up. I want to jump ahead to tomorrow very quickly because things are definitely going to be changing. As you get to think about tomorrow morning, we are going to have clouds with some fall a little bit of mist and drizzle around the area as the humidity comes back in here and then throughout the day 68 degrees and maybe a couple of showers. This is going to be for tomorrow just so you can kind of get prepared and maybe plan to leave a little bit extra early tomorrow morning. Now back to today. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. We've got plenty of sunshine. Notice how we do have those high wispy clouds. Yeah, we'll keep a lot of those around throughout the day. It started to warm up a little bit in uh, Balverde, Bernie, Comfort, now just above freezing, uh, still freezing at Tarpley and Kerrville. We're still at 37 degrees here in town. And throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 57 at noon and partly cloudy sky, 65 for a high temperature. So beautiful day. Maybe not quite as perfect as yesterday with some of those high clouds, but still absolutely fantastic out there. But as I just alluded to, it's all going to be changing tomorrow, and that's pretty much the way it's going to be sticking around most of next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Max. Thanks, Mike. In your morning headlines, the impeachment showdown and a pivotal week in Washington. Speaker Nancy Pelosi is promising to send articles of impeachment to the Senate, setting the stage for a historic trial. ABC's David Wright is at the White House with more on what to expect. This is set to be a momentous week here in Washington as the impeachment process resumes after a brief break over the holidays. House Democrats are expected to discuss impeachment at their caucus on Tuesday. And after that, the full House will vote to appoint managers for the case, and they will then vote to transmit the articles of impeachment over to the Senate. That means that the soonest an impeachment trial could begin in the Senate would be Wednesday. For now, Speaker Pelosi appears to have lost her effort to convince Senate Republicans to allow witnesses in the trial, but there is still some room for that to change if they can convince four Senate Republicans to break ranks. And David, Senator McConnell has said that he wants to use the Clinton impeachment trial as a precedent here. Does that give us a sense of how long President Trump's trial could take? It gives us a possibility. Uh, that trial began almost exactly at this time of year, January 7th, and it was over in just over a month. Uh, there were a couple of days for the managers to present their case, among them a young congressman, Lindsey Graham, a few days for the president to mount a defense, and all of this presided over by the chief justice. You see him there, William Rehnquist at the time. No witnesses at that trial, but we did hear some video testimony. So this time it takes place against the backdrop of the beginning of primary season. That could cause a problem for the five Senate Democrats who are normally out on the campaign trail. And again, that was David Wright reporting at the White House. In the Philippines today, a volcano south of the capital causing tremors and spewing ash into the air. Authorities ordering the evacuation of about 8,000 people, even canceling flights to and from the region. The volcano spewed ash that generated nearly a mile high plume, triggering ashfall in nearby communities. And severe storms that swept across portions of the U.S. are being blamed for the deaths of at least 11 people. And it was a close call for a family in spring near Houston. High winds from storms yesterday toppled a neighbor's tree onto their home. A couple and their 10-month-old baby were inside. The roof was crushed, kitchen damaged, but they all got out of that house and they're safe. 
And taking a look ahead to next week, six Democratic presidential candidates are set to take the stage Tuesday night in Des Moines, Iowa. This marks the seventh debate of the primary season and will be the last be debate before the Iowa caucuses on February 3rd. And China's vice premier is set to travel to the United States this week after the two sides reached a first stage deal on trade. President Donald Trump has said phase one will be signed on Wednesday and work on the second phase of the deal will begin soon, but he doesn't expect a resolution before the November presidential election. The nominations for the 92nd Academy Awards will be announced on Monday morning. Movie fans can stream those nominations on various social media platforms, including Facebook and Twitter. The announcement will also be live streamed on the official Oscars YouTube page. So the Academy announcing last week that for the second year in a row, there will be no host for the February 9th ceremony. And this next story goes out to Steph and all the big music lovers out there. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame unveiling its 2020 class of inductees on Wednesday. And there are 16 contenders this year. Wow. Yeah. Nine first year nominees vying for their spot in the Hall of Fame. Among some of the favorites this year, late singer Whitney Houston, late rapper Notorious B.I.G. And the induction ceremony will be held May 2nd in Cleveland. Interesting. I already thought Whitney Houston was there, but not yet. We'll see. We'll see. So South Texas has reached a critically low shortage of blood this week. Just one major accident away of it depleting its blood supply. So earlier this week, there was a call out to the public for donations. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center saying donations were made, but still falling short of the necessary goal. Our Sarah Costa is live at the donor pavilion that opened their doors early today to reach that goal. Good morning, and it's not just the donor pavilion that is open. They have opened, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center has opened all of their donations centers so you can come and donate because that level is so critically low. There was a plea put out on Tuesday that they needed 2,162 donations so they wouldn't deplete all of their supply. Yesterday, there's still 100 donations short, and it makes me happy to say that there are quite a few people donating on this early Sunday morning. So the part of the community is doing your part, but there are still empty beds. And I'm here with Miss Mary with the blood and South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And I mean, does it make you feel good at, you know, you are seeing a, a good amount of people here for this early morning? It is heartwarming to see donors turn out on a Sunday morning to come support patients in our community. And, and that's what we need every day is an ongoing supply of blood donations to support hospitals across South Texas. Uh, earlier this week, there was a statement put out, you know, the, you guys are, South Texas is just, you know, one traumatic accident away from depleting its donation supply. And, you know, how did we get to this level? You said there were some cr uh, major accidents in December that kind of lowered that, the That's supply. Right. December and, and as recently as last week, there were several trauma cases that used un, un, unusually large volumes of blood. So that depletes the supply and it, it is hard as we come into the new year to rebuild that inventory. But that's what we're working to do now and why we appreciate donors coming out this morning, tomorrow and going forward. Come out and do your part. Just go to SouthTexasBlood.org. That's right. SouthTexasBlood.org. You can either make an appointment or, of course, if you're just out and about and you're driving I-10 or near any of those other donation areas, just stop in. It takes about an hour to donate, and they'll go through the process with you What, if you are able to donate or not. Live from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center Donation Pavilion, Donors Pavilion, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Max and Stephanie. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 838, 37 degrees out. I feel like it's just getting colder. For now. For now. So take a look at these sunglasses, or actually glasses. One Ukrainian company thinking outside the box and making eyeglasses that are environmentally friendly. You would not believe what they're made of. Still Do you ahead. wear glasses? No, I wear contacts. Mm, I have both. I just don't look good in the glasses. Oh, you should try it out. We'll, we'll be the judge. Not right? on air. <laughs> Let's see the pets, please. Well, he is a puppy still, gonna be a big dog and lots of energy, and all he needs is plenty of love, and you're gonna meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Uh, and taking a live look at the Alamo City, Mike, let's talk about some of those uh, nominations. No, so, uh, Pat Benatar's on the yes. list. Uh, Talk the about Lizzie, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Todd Rundgren, MC5. Nobody know them. Back from uh, and the my band, The Post Mode. Doobie okay. Brothers. <laughs> Dave Matthews Band. Yep. A lot to look for. We'll be right back. 
people, if you need a big dose of just energy and excitement and just love and life, that's the guy. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and who is he? This is Jaden, and he is a four-month-old pug terrier mix. He's already 16 pounds at four months old. Not quite sure if he's going to be around a 30-pound dog or maybe even a little bit more, but this guy just loves life, and he is so excited to be here anywhere as long as he's with you. And I'll tell you what, he, uh, Officer Trujillo is walking behind the cameras right there, <laughs> and he's just like, what's going on? What, what's going on over there? And what, do you, what do you see? Is that, is that the officer back there? Yes. Yes. Can you speak? Or He's or, actually not really. I have not heard a really? peep out of him. Well, that's always good. Yeah. Tell you what, if you want... <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Marcus. <laughs> trying to get the dog going. <laughs> if you want a uh, walking buddy, a jogging buddy, this is going to be the guy for you. And a tennis ball in the backyard with kids. And Absolutely. And everybody's going to be sleeping. So. And this is the kind of dog that's going to get along with everybody. Right. Everybody, and he loves other dogs too. You wanted to talk about fostering. Yeah, we are, you know, San Antonio, we're warm all year round, and so we constantly have a supply of puppies and kittens, and we need fosters to help with that. So um, if you go to our website, we have a whole foster page, and uh, you can find out what we need uh, in terms of help. And also, our, our wish list is there, and we do always have a need for formula and toys and a variety of things. So check out the ADL website. ADLTexas.org. Uh, you can see all our, vol our volunteer, foster, and wish it, list. You know, and it seems like for all the shelters, this has been a tough year because there wasn't really the lull after the big spring and summer influx of all the Absolutely. puppies and kittens, and it's been just going strong. And now we got spring yep. coming up in you know right around the corner. Basically. And we'll have so. lots of puppies and okay. kittens. So, <laughs> so if you would like to uh, foster, great learning opportunity for the kids as well as uh, some volunteer hours for them. Eleven three hundred Nacogdoches is the main campus of the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Six five five fourteen eighty one is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. I don't know how you don't go home with three yeah. new puppies every week. It's always so funny, and I mentioned in this one, Marcus, Officer Trujillo, is usually there when we shoot on Tuesdays, and he's behind the camera. <laughs> What's going on? What's he's, going on? He's it's also funny. loving on the pets. Aww. Yes, he is, but he's also trying to get them riled up, I'll say. So, oh, you know, how cute funny. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 37 degrees now, but later, a perfect day yeah, to walk maybe, your dogs. Uh, yep, yeah, fantastic day to walk your dog. Um, we're going to have a few high clouds out there. And wow. by the way, tonight, if the clouds don't really thicken up too awfully much, you might be able to see the moon. Now, it is a couple of days past full. It was full on Friday, but wow, somebody got a new Celestron telescope. Don't know what that means, but <laughs> watching the full moon on a cold night downtown. How cool is that? Great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, once again, we came out with this mountain cedar today. Did drop down significantly from yesterday down to 2,400 plus. Still on the high side, obviously. Mold is low, and hopefully... Mountain Cedar stays on the lower side throughout the next few days because we don't have any strong northwesterly winds in the forecast until probably late next week. Now, there's those high clouds that we are talking about. Still 37 degrees. Everybody is now, at least the reporting stations now, above freezing. Close to it, obviously, though. Hondo and uh, Tarpley. And the humidity is, is not bad. Now, humidity is really going to come back into the picture overnight. And so that's going to lead to some mist, drizzle, some fog in the morning. And there's some of those high clouds that are moving on in here and they'll be sticking around throughout the day and here's the computer model which shows yeah, some of those higher clouds and then clouds thicken up overnight with that extra humidity probably mist and drizzle fog in the morning tomorrow and perhaps a couple of showers throughout the afternoon one or two of them here and there it's not going to be a big deal same thing going into tomorrow night and then also Tuesday morning we'll have mist drizzle maybe a sprinkly shower some fog around the area not widespread just that nuisance kind of stuff the reason being the wind is really going to start to uh, pump in all that moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico and so that's why the humidity levels dew points definitely go up we're going to be staying in the about to low to mid 60s throughout most of the week, and that is going to hold temperatures, especially low temperatures, definitely up. So no fronts, at least here. But by Saturday, if this went one day further, this would drop back down again because we do have that front coming through on Saturday. So here's what the upper level winds look like. We got a little bit of a wave coming through tomorrow. That's going to maybe 
give us a couple little sprinkles here and there. But for the most part, we've got a very sort of tranquil flow. There's going to be a lot of moisture around here, a lot of clouds, a couple little sprinkly showers here and there going through the rest of the week. And that'll be about it. Not much really to write home about this week, but then there's that front that comes through on Saturday. So that's going to cool us back down and uh, have a little bit more in the way of some sunshine by Saturday. But until then, well, today's great. Next Saturday, pretty good. The week is going to be, like I said, kind of so-so. 57 degrees today, mostly sunny skies. A lot of high clouds today and a te high temperature up to 65, a little bit above normal. Good looking day. Humidity is still going to be very pleasant, but it comes up overnight. And so that's going to hold temperatures in the upper 40s tomorrow. It won't be as cold, but it's going to be that sort of damp chill. When you have all that humidity, it kind of kind of sneaks down the back of your neck a little bit, those colder temperatures. And then 75 on Tuesday. Some morning fog tomorrow and Tuesday mornings. You know, one or two showers here and there, not really a big deal. And then we'll be back down to the low 60s for high temperature next Saturday. Oh, but today beautiful for Sarah's yeah. wedding. It's going to be, well, yeah. any day is beautiful and Sarah's going to be. She's just, going to be beautiful. She's be such a beautiful bride too. So can't wait. Congrats again if, if you're awake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you don't know what's going on, Sarah Spivey is getting married. Yes, yes. That's why we get to hang yes. out with Mike this morning. <laughs> There's always a downside to it. <laughs> the way you said it, that's why we're getting to hang out with I didn't say it was a consequence. Wow. <laughs> uh, whatever. Welcome, Mike. We're always good to have you. to have you. 849, 37 degrees out. All right, coming up next, uh, how one company in Ukraine making some eyeglasses out of coffee beans. What? <laughs> I will eat those glasses. Good morning. Coming up on this week, my exclusive interview with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She's going to join us live this morning after a momentous week. Of course, she did appear to decide at the end of the week that the House would send over those articles of impeachment, even though she got no upfront guarantees that there would be witnesses and new documents in the Senate trial. We're going to talk to her about that this morning. Also, the latest on the crisis in Iran with those demonstrators in the streets. We'll speak with the president's national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, and of course, our powerhouse roundtable. It's all coming up on this week. And tomorrow on GMSA, when it comes to home improvements, hiring the right contractor can be difficult. Yes, it can. All you need to do is know somebody. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so you hire or know what you need to know so you can hire the right person, the correct person. That's right. Recommendations from mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. That always helps too. out. That helps out yeah. as well. Um, we've got some high clouds out there, as you can see. Still a great looking day. We're at 37, excuse me, up to 43 degrees right now. So we have started the, obviously, the warming process. And everybody's now above freezing. 57 degrees at noon and 65 degrees for a uh, high temperature with a lot of uh, those high clouds hanging around here. And we're going to start off with some uh, mist and drizzle tomorrow morning, some mm -hmm. patchy fog. Same thing Tuesday. Very mild the rest of the week. I got to be Not honest, bad. I'm really jealous of the, the mug. Does it say GMSA on it? Yes, of course it does. <laughs> All right. We'll get to that. <laughs> oh, they did it. Ooh, and it holds a big <laughs> cup of coffee, Max. Ugh, need coffee. All right, anyway, mm. producers yelling at us, we got to go to the kicker. Check out this environmentally friendly way to make eyeglasses for all you coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. Look at that transition. Mm -hmm. You can do more than just drink your favorite cup of Joe. Mike, you can wear it. Wow. I'll be darn. This Ukrainian <laughs> business is using coffee grounds to make eco friendly glasses. They say it can take up to seven days to prepare the material for the coffee sunglasses. Two more hours of manual work to put to the frames ready for sale. On average, they use enough coffee grounds from one cup of espresso mm. to make one pair of glasses. The lenses are made from recycled cotton. Most of their customers are from other countries like Japan, Australia, and the United States. Wait, All right, lenses are made from recycled cotton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. That's, yeah, that's odd. So the, the actual frames are your coffee, your coffee. coffee grounds. And then the lenses, a recycled cotton. Interesting. What if, what I don't still, know. If it's obviously it's mixed with some sort of resin, I wonder right. if it still smells like coffee. I wear That's, glasses. That was my question. I wonder if uh, while I'm wearing, I'm fine if I, if I with the, the coffee scent. The though. coffee scent. Okay, I know, but I'm. And espresso is my favorite kind of coffee, so it's perfect. I, I know. It's efficient. But I'm going to be like this, like. <laughs> you know, She's like about I'm going to eat your mug too. I know. I love coffee. Have a great day. Have